Welcome back Copic fans. We are attacking our mixed media project one more time. I think we've got probably two videos left on this and remember all the techniques I'm sharing are things that you can put on any project. We've done a series I think so far of four videos doing all sorts of different techniques and now we're going to come back in on all of our layers and add one more layer. Um, all the color in this um, project has been done with Copic inks and so um, and you can review any of those videos on our YouTube channel or find links on our Copic in the Craft Room Facebook page. So I'm going to run through really quick what we've got and then we're going to add on those top layers and we might have to do some drying in between. But we've got some pages that are collaged with doodling. We've got, and these are on um, chipboard. This one has some stenciling. It also has some doodling. This is a clear acetate um, page. It's a little bit longer than the others. It has the holes on either side already. But we've got um, the painting and dripping on one side. Then I came back in and did some drawing on the back side. So it is on that shiny side of the acetate at this point and it has a really beautiful look to it. Um, this again is back to chipboard and we've got um, a basic gesso layer underneath. Then we did a bunch of misting and also airbrushing with the Copic inks. Um, the inside page is chipboard. It's um, naked or bare chipboard and it truly is done all with airbrush and stenciling. There was a little bit of like stamping with stencils that you can see underneath some of that but just all layers with just on that bare chipboard so it looks a little different. Um, again on top of the gesso and then we have a fabric page that eventually here is going to get sewn together but this is one side. It has kind of those little rubber dots on it. Um, so a neat effect there, mostly airbrush and misting on this one. And then the other half of that page is a silk piece and that was done with some tie-dye and fabric techniques. Then we have um, at the, towards the end a stamped image that was colored in and I did get her mostly complete and we worked on that kind of in the last session. Um, again, it's on top of gesso so it looks very different and I just, I was real careful with my pens, didn't ruin any nibs, just kept scrubbing off real good, but ended up with a really neat image kind of toward the back of my book. And then I have the final cover page, which is again that collage, um, little pieces of page, um, book pages that have been collaged all together and then on, doodling done then on top of that. So you can go backtrack and see any of those techniques. All of them would work great for backgrounds and different mixed media projects, but even on your own card making and craft making projects. So now we're going to go through and add just some finishing touches. This part won't take too long. Um, I've got all these accessories then that will glue on top and um, I will maybe do some of that today, but I never want to make any promises because I'm just not sure how far I will get. So, and um, when we come back for one last video, I'll actually assemble it all so you can see it all put together in a book and see what the final product looks like. All right, so I am gonna stop talking at this point and I will voice over so we can speed up and you guys can see more of the action. So I've got a plate full of different mediums. I'm gonna add some ink to one of my piles of modeling paste. And then I'm gonna use a stencil. This one is a Tim Holtz stencil. And just smearing that in. Lifting up and I've got this great texture now. I'm gonna do the same thing on a couple different pages since I've got it all mixed up. The modeling paste holds on to the Copic ink really well so you get some pretty intense colors. I am using darker colors. That was a B69 that went into that one. This is actually a B79, which is even a little bit darker, but it's going into gesso. And as you can see, it definitely disperses quite a bit more. I've stamped with just a paper towel roll and then flicked some paint or gesso back into modeling paste again. Actually, I take that back. This time it's um, glass bead gel medium. Literally is a clear gel medium that has some glass beads in it and I've added some color into that. 
Copic ink, and then I'm smearing that around. The gel medium will dry a little more clear, but it's pretty bright to start. And then you'll be left with the glass beads. Um, this is just a piece of bubble wrap, and I'm putting some of that gesso on there to stamp with. Then stamping more rings with the gesso and using a stencil to kind of pounce through with the gesso as well onto that fabric. It doesn't work the second time as well. It's got some paint on the back of the stencil, so it just makes a big mess. So I'm going to clean that off. And actually, I'm going to wipe some of it off the fabric, I think, as well. But I'm going to go back to um, the modeling paste at this point. And this time, I've added that um, B79 in it and then run a comb through it for texture. Modeling paste through a stencil again for the corner of this one. And a little more ink into another pile of the glass beads. This time I'm just putting it right on top of some of the image. I haven't ever done this before with the ink in it, so I'm not totally sure how that's going to dry. But I'm just kind of smearing it across some of the corners for a little bit more of a distressed look. Adding it in on a couple of places on this other chipboard. And again into the corners, kind of spreading that out. I still want to see what's lying underneath, so I'm, I'm spreading that out a little bit so you can see underneath. And since I still have some left, I've grabbed my acrylic, and I'm going to add a little bit of those glass beads on that acrylic as well. adding a few more rings with my gesso, and then I'm going to have to let these sides dry. Now I'm going to come back and work on the second side of all those pages. Again, this is that gesso and just stamping with that bubble wrap. I'm adding a little more ink, um, this time with a B28. Obviously, I saturated it a little bit more going in and doing some individual birds from a stencil. But I have a darker color because I've added more ink to gesso. Um, R85 is going into my last little group of um, actually the modeling paste. And so I'm adding a few birds. It's a lighter color to start, so these guys are pretty light. Gesso through a stencil again, and a few more rings. One more ink into gesso, trying to get a real a nice rich color again. And this time I'm working on top of those collage pages. So it's a really slick surface that I'm working on top of. So I've smeared the paint really thin so I can see the doodling underneath. I wanted to stress the edges, but I wanted to um, keep the coloring underneath. The smooth surface really allows for that, though. Adding a couple rings and a stenciled bird. And I think that's about it. All right, so I have 
um, six pages and I have the layers that I want actually on the pages at this point. Um, this is the silk half of the fabric page and how that ended up with some great texture on top. I honestly am not sure how the modeling paste will work, if it'll crackle as, the, as it dries on the fabric, but a lot of times I'm just experimenting as I do a mixed media project like this. The other half of the fabric, I didn't add a whole lot, but I added some of those colored gesso um, stamped with bubble wrap and the rings, and then I have the modeling paste, the birds that I came back and added. And then each of these has two sides to it. So you've got layers on both sides of these, of each one. And some things haven't completely dried yet, but hopefully you're gonna start seeing some neat shimmer effects. <laughs> the acrylic's hard to see because of things behind, sitting behind it. So we will revisit this one last time and then out the door it goes um, and I will assemble all of this together and I will add all the things we've been coloring along the way into layers on top of what we just finished up today and add it all together. Thanks for watching this week. I hope you learned some, something new that you can add into your own crafting slash art projects and can take away. Have a happy, colorful week.